Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, last night we had a bunch of storms blow through last night. Everything seems to be fine here, um, but today we've got 50 mile an hour gusts today. So it's very windy outside. Not real great day to go do anything out there. So I've decided to work inside here and we're going to start installing the wood stove here in our pole barn. So I bought this wood stove uh, probably a couple months ago and this is a pleasant hearth wood stove. It's made in the United States. This is a 2200 BTU wood stove. It's the biggest one I think they actually make. And we're going to use that to heat this back half of the workshop. So the first thing I did after I got this, I did open it up. I made sure the glass wasn't broken. And today I was finally able to get inside and make sure none of the bricks or anything are cracked. We went ahead and put our handles on and I think everything's pretty well assembled on the stove. There's not much to do to it. Uh, but before we can actually install it in the location, we need to cover up the walls. We need to cover up the walls and the spray foam insulation uh, anywhere close to where the wood stove's gonna be. So the other day, me and Rebecca mounted some corrugated metal behind where the wood stove's gonna go. So the plan here in the woodworking shop is to take this corrugated metal, we, we ripped that off the old barn, we're gonna put it four feet tall and we're gonna try to go around the entire room uh, along the bottom of the room. But behind the wood stove, we decided that it would look better if we went taller. So we went six feet tall behind the wood stove and it's gonna sit basically right where I'm standing. So the next thing I'm going to do is frame out the ceiling up above the wood stove where the chimney pipe's going to go through. So I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of this corrugated metal up on the ceiling um, and that's where the chimney pipe's going to go through. The ceiling's not done, but we're just going to go ahead and put a small piece up there so that we can go ahead and get our chimney pipe mounted and up through the roof. Twelve inch opening for the chimney to go through. So we got the ceiling framed out for this 24 inch piece of galvanized metal and it's also framed out with a 12 inch hole for the chimney pipe to go through. So this here is a decorative ring that will go against the galvanized metal. And then here is another piece of that. It's going to look something like that. And then inside of that there's going to be this chimney pipe adapter that's going to fit inside of that and that's going to adapt the insulated chimney pipe that's in the attic and will go through the roof to the normal style chimney pipe. 
So the chimney pipe in the attic has to have a two inch clearance. So what we're gonna do is that decorative ring is basically your two inch clearance. So we're gonna cut this galvanized metal out the same size as the inner diameter of this ring. And then I think we're ready to start mounting everything. So up in the attic above this galvanized metal, on top of that framework, there's gonna be this, this is an attic insulation shield. And so if we put insulation in the attic, it'll keep it from touching the chimney pipe that's gonna be passing through this. So the framework we just put in, this is gonna to attach to the top of the framework. And then the galvanized metal is gonna be on the bottom and then the decorative ring will be up underneath that. We got the decorative ring mounted to the galvanized. That don't look too bad. Time to put on the attic insulation shield. It should fit in here. All right, here we go. There we go. First section of chimney pipe in. So I've got another three, nine feet to go. I'm gonna go through the roof right in here. But we'll do that tomorrow. It's, uh, it ended up being 18 inches from the wall, which is a couple inches more than minimum. And what we're shooting for was our stove pipe to be right here at 24 inches at the center. So that ought to be perfectly lined up with where we put the, uh, the stuff in the ceiling. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stove pipe from the stove up to the ceiling. Now most people are gonna use, a lot of times you always see people use single walled stove pipe. And I'm using something different. It is a double walled stove pipe, real similar to what we have in the attic, um, but it's black and looks like the normal stove pipe. So when you look at it this way, you see the crimped edge, that looks like a normal stove pipe, right? But when you look at the other side, you can see there's actually two layers. So there's an air gap in between here. So you have a crimped ring, just like you would on the other end, but then there's another layer here so that puts air in between, that makes this um, not as hot to touch. So it's a little cooler to the touch, a little bit safer. All right, we got the stove pipe in from the stove all the way up here to the top of the ceiling. And this last piece of pipe here, this is an extendable stove pipe, so it will go up and down. So what we're gonna do is this one will slide upward and it'll go inside of the adapter and then we'll just screw that in place and then we're done with our stove pipe. All right, we got the black double walled stove pipe. It's all complete all the way to the ceiling. So this isn't the straightest looking stove pipe in the world. All they had at Menards was two foot sections. So there's a bunch of two foot pieces of pipe going all the way up there. And this would have looked a lot better if we had some longer pieces. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get up here in the attic and we're gonna do the stainless steel 
insulated chimney pipe from here all the way through the roof. So our chimney pipe's gonna go on and then it twists into place. So then we got this locking ring that goes around it and attaches the two pipes together so they can't come apart. So up underneath the roof here where the chimney's gonna go through, I uh, went ahead and framed that out so that it has at least a couple inches of clearance on each side of the chimney pipe. So that is clearance horizontally. So it's 12 inches, at least 12 inches this direction, this direction that's closer to 13 and a half. So you gotta keep that in mind. But uh, basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drill out, I think the four corners, and we're just gonna cut this whole square out because the flashing kit that I have that goes on here will cover a 16 inch hole. So it's plenty big enough to cover that whole big square if we cut it out. All right, so up here on the roof, we can see our four holes. We're gonna cut that out. I'm just gonna probably use a Sawzall with a metal blade. I'm gonna try that out. And it's a pretty nice day today. Pretty good view. All right, straight down to the chimney pipe. Oh, got it on there. All right, so this here is a spacer for when you're passing through the roof and it's gonna make sure we keep our minimum distances. So it also is gonna attach to the framework that we put around here and it's gonna space everything out appropriately and hold the chimney right in place. So this right here is our rubber roof flashing to go around the chimney. This is made by the chimney company for this application. And it's gonna go over the chimney pipe. It's actually gonna go around the shield right here. And then it's made, it's flexible so that it can actually bend around the ridges of the roof. We're gonna put silicone all the way around this to seal it up so it doesn't leak. So I'm just carefully cutting this with a razor blade to the appropriate diameter. All right, now we're gonna see if this flashing will fit over this. All right, got the rubber boot put on. You can see how that wraps around the ribs of the roof. You can see the caulking squirting out from underneath there. That is very sticky stuff. That through the roof is some good stuff. Nobody's gonna see that up here. I'm not even gonna bother trying to wipe that up because it's just so sticky. This is the cheesiest part of the whole deal. I don't know. There's a screen that goes in here and it's like, I don't know if it's a bug screen that goes in here, but anyway. So I had to put this mesh screen around here and then our storm collar is gonna go on top. All right, I got the storm collar on. I think it's fitted up fairly good. I did trim it a little higher in the back so that it fit the rubber boot a little bit better. So I got to put a couple screws in this to tie it together. And then we've got some high temperature silicone and we're gonna seal around the top of this where it meets the chimney pipe. 
after we're done with that, get the rain cap on, and I think we're pretty much done. All right, I think we're finished with the installation of the wood stove and the chimney pipe here in the workshop. And I think I'm ready to go ahead and, and light the first fire. So the first few times you burn this, you actually have to do a controlled burn, a controlled temperature to cure the paint. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, so we gotta do a couple small fires of 250 degrees on the stove for like 20 minutes. And then there's a, the third fire's gotta be like 500 degrees for 45 minutes. And then after that, the paint's supposed to be cured and it's supposed to be ready to use. So let's go ahead and uh, light this thing up. So here in the workshop, I do have plenty of scrap pieces of wood. Now, one thing different about this stove from my fireplace in the house, this actually does have like, a, like an ash drawer to be able to dump the ash. And there's a brick in here with a little eye bolt on it that you pull out and you can shove all the ash down inside of that ashtray. That's a little bit different from the fireplace in the house. We just have to scoop it right out of the fireplace. So this knob right here, this is your air control and all the way to the right full air. And then uh, we're gonna just leave the door cracked while we get this lit up. Always got plenty of cutoffs to put in here. All right, we got our fireplace lit up for the first time. We've got it up to the temperature to cure the paint. And uh, yeah, pretty happy to finally have this installed and finally burning a fire. This is gonna be good use of, of good way to get rid of the wood scraps here in the woodworking shop. And we got plenty of firewood to be able to heat this place. So the next thing I need to do so that this works better is I need to get the ceiling in here. So we're gonna put a metal ceiling here in the pole barn. And when we finally get that in, this will really help heat this place up quite a bit. So really happy to get this done today. This was actually like three days worth of work. I think, to get this all installed. And uh, I think I had to run to the store at least two or three times to finally get all the fittings and, and chimney pipe that I needed. So finally glad, glad to have this one done and out of the way. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>